Okay, Luigi Tramontana here a third time with a four wheel extended. Now this is an advanced tutorial and again I'm in Max, it doesn't matter, it could be Maya, Exercise Cinema 4D, uh, Macintosh, Linux, it doesn't matter. It looks the same and it works the same, okay? So, by saying that I will just continue into this uh, hardcore stuff here because uh, this is what convinces you hardcore animators uh, of some fears you have from previous projects. Now, this one is a child to this ground now, that's how the simulator knows that it's that this ground, but if you want multiple meshes you make them a child of this one, that's how it works right now. So by having said that one, I will go on going over to the next subject, namely keyframes here, and how about distributed rendering and motion blur? Well, first of all, in Maya Cinema 40 XSI, the keyframes are totally ordinary PRS keyframes. They are so clean, which you will see in the graph editor soon, that they don't need any cleanup at all. In Max, you need to do one single thing because Max has a really, really, really slow PRS controller. So these are gray right now. And the, the only thing you have to do here, because we use our own Kraft Raceback mocap controller here, well, you convert it to a PRS controller. And this is where they are like that. So this is totally ordinary key, uh, P, PRS keys now, which means we can go into the graph editor here. And by the way, I'm just going to mention the, the render farm issue here. No issue at all. As soon as you have done this, and we should actually go into, this, instead of doing that object by object in match, Ma uh, in, in Max, you just go into this preferences here and check this, uh, click this button here and all the objects that you have created here with Craft will turn into this PRS control. So that could be the last thing you do. And then you just send everything to the render farm because even if you don't have installed the, the tool, it will not be disturbed by that because it treats them like ordinary meshes. These are ordinary meshes, so nothing special about them. With keys on them. That's all it is. Now let's go into the graph editor here. I have made a little animation here. Mm, it goes over this curb. Oh, yeah. Like that. Let's just have a quick, 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 quick look at. We have so many things to cover here so I'm, I'm just going to. Yeah, so we're coming in here doing a little uh, burnout there and yeah, a little skid break at the end there. Okay. So let's go in and have a look at this front wheels curves here. Mm -hmm. How do they look like? Well, clean as a whistle as you see here no funny stuff going on here these are totally clean and as with all keyframes in you can do uh, soft selection here if you click that one and I have move on there so I just click this one and if I want to change the rotation or the translations well I just do it and then they are changed in the scene obviously if I would have stood on that particular frame so not or you do layered animation, uh, which you can do in Maya if you want to, or XSI. Now, the next thing I, I need to show you here is that uh, that uh, we have uh, the external force, which is another very interesting thing here. And uh, what you will also see, I mean, first, what you saw there in the graph editor was nothing like, like a, a motion capture data, because you see this is like eight well nine eight point five thousand uh, degrees minus so that means it has turned many 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 times and the thing here is that even if you turn many many turns during one frame you will still have a very very clean curve so you can drive in one million miles an hour and it would still render the motion blur perfectly so don't be afraid of that it works every time thank you for that and the next topic here is the external force now that's just a, an advanced feature and if to understand it completely you should take a look at the the um, the uh, firepower tutorial. I will create a firepower here so we have it. Uh, but uh, right now we will just have a look at this little yellow thing here. And uh, so zoom out a little bit and move it. And what do I do with this one? Well, I can do many, many interesting things with it. I will loosen up the suspension here immediately like that. And uh, well, not loosen up, but I will allow it to swing more, swing more. Because uh, uh, if we have a look at the input settings here, 
then we see that we have mapped everything here. If you want to map it to something else, you just pull your joystick to some axis like that. And perhaps I would have liked that. Uh, but usually, and then you save it as a start profile here. So every time you create a four wheeler, you have your favorite mapping. And here we see all the features that you press skidding, skid brake, gravel shake, burnout, external force. Now, what is the external force? It's on the button two here. And if I press this button two, it's actually, I can do a plus and minus here. One, zero, one, okay. So that should be an analog. Let's say I do it on that axis, okay. So let's see what happens here when I pull this one now. There we go. And I pull it upwards, yeah. So minus, plus, minus, plus. So I can do this funny, funny Mexican car kinds of stuff here. Let's just turn that one a little like that. So you see the effect, whoa. So you see, this can be, this, this is very interesting to use, especially in combination with other tools. And you communicate this because you remember that's an input. So how can we utilize that? Well, we can actually create, we can bind it to a virtual input, which is in this case, the firepower creates a virtual input. So every time a bullet is outputted, it outputs a bang, a little impulse there that you can trigger into the external force. And if you have that, this arrow here uh, linked uh, or a child to this, uh, to this cannon here and you turn it around here, this is a tutorial with the, with the, with the firepower, so check that out. Then you have the recoil action of the, the vehicle here. Very, very, very interesting stuff. Now the next thing I will take up here is uh, that the car also have virtual input. So we have to go into another another uh, object here to see that. We could go into this one, but uh, so if I just uh, pick the four wheel extended here instead, we can just check out what different kinds. So we have the velocity as an output. So you can put that into, into a 1D rotator, for example. This is the percent of max velocity. Uh, and then we have the steering angle is also an output. So all of those things, if the wheel is actually touching the ground here, that's also out virtual inputs here. So all of those stuff you can put into other objects. Now there's another little interesting thing here that we can utilize and that is called the turn base. Now this is the turn base. And if I go back to the very start here and uh, let's just open up that and go into steering parameters. Then I can change this two wheel steering to any four wheel steering I would like by changing the location. Now zero means it's exactly at the rear wheels here going through that axis. If I plus that to 0 0.5, this means that the, the turn base will snap to the center here exactly almost in the middle, depends on how the front wheels are connected uh, to the chassis. But there you go, it's right in the middle there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's there. And if I turn my wheels now, look at this. Okay, so I had the external force to that one too. All right, so let's actually put, the, uh, not that one of course, the forward backwards was on the Y axis like that. Okay, so we're there and Right, okay, I seem to have gotten my, my inputs a little bit uh, faulty here, but that doesn't matter. You see, I'm steering with my four, four, four wheels here, like that, okay. So that's a real fun thing. And the last thing I'm going to show you is something called the chassis relocator. And that's quite funny because let's pretend here that I was driving, 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 and I came to this point here and I wanted it to jump there, right there because it got scared or something. Remember, these can be characters. Then I put a key on this. Actually, I need to reparent this, this uh, high poly mesh here to the chassis relocator as we did in the tutorial. And then I just hit a key there and continue forward a bit. And then I can perhaps rise it upwards, maybe rotate it a little bit. I mean, this is all up to you. Like, yeah, I could do like, perhaps like uh, this. No, not that one. This one. Uh, rotate it like that. Put a key here. Like that. And then I just shift copy this one into a position in the future here. Like that. So it, got, it got scared by a mouse or something. I don't know. Like this. And uh, we just... Uh, woo! 
like that. And this you can do with the wheels. That's layered animation, by the way, so nothing special about that. And by saying all of those things, I think I am done showing you everything with the four-wheeler extended. And uh, you have a fantastic day, and I hope you will enjoy these uh, little special things I showed you here. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.